lecture covers what's known as acids and bases and look at some of the example reactions of acids and bases. So basically in this chapter or this section, some terminology to know. Uh, so for acids and bases, there's three different definitions of acids and bases used. There's the Arrhenius definition, um, the Bronsted-Lowry definition, which is the one that we're going to focus on in this chapter. And there's the Lewis acid and base definition. So um, <clears throat> for those of you who go on to Chem 1312, uh, there'll be two entire chapters devoted to acids and bases. And in those chapters, you cover the other two definitions of the Arrhenius definition, the Lewis acid base definition. In this chapter, uh, you'll just have to know the Bronsted-Lowry definition. Okay, so Bronsted-Lowry acid is anything that donates a proton or an H plus or hydrogen in a reaction. And then the base is the opposite. It's anything that accepts a proton or H plus or accepts a hydrogen in a reaction. Okay, so let's look at a couple of few examples. Okay, so if we take this molecule. And if you react that with water molecule, then what happens is you make you make that, and you make you make that. So based on this um, reaction, you can define or what was the acid what was the base okay so if you notice in in the reaction this molecule lost it lost a hydrogen it lost that one so this molecule then must be the acid and this molecule gained a hydrogen so it is a base Okay, so often in chemistry, especially once you get on organic chemistry, we try to depict how this reaction happened. Um, so we'll write what's called a mechanism. So we'll use arrows to show how a reaction happens where the arrows uh, represent movement of electrons. And again, so those of you who go on organic chemistry, you'll be doing this all the time. You'll be writing mechanisms for reactions. Okay, so what happened in this reaction then is a lone pair on oxygen of water made a bond to this hydrogen and that's where this new line came from so now you have a new line from oxygen to hydrogen in the product and then when you made a bond to this hydrogen on um, when you made a bond to that hydrogen then these two electrons in the OH bond became a lone pair on the oxygen and that's where this third lone pair came from it came from from that arrow so those two electrons in the OH bond become a third lone pair on oxygen okay so let me sketch this reaction again so it's a little bit cleaner
Okay, so that was the reaction. And so this oxygen is now negative one. If you calculate the formal charge, right? Six valence electrons on oxygen, minus six dots on one line. And the oxygen of H3O is plus charged, plus one charge, right? Six valence minus three lines and two dots. So it'd be plus one charged. And again, so how this reaction happens is those lone pair take that hydrogen and these electrons in the OH bond become a lone pair on the, that oxygen. And so this is given up a hydrogen, so that's an acid. This is accepting the hydrogen, so that's a base. So in theory, all reactions are reversible. So this reaction could go backwards. So the two products that you make could react with each other to reform the reactants. So if that happens, then this oxygen would need to take hydrogen. So it could take any three of the hydrogens, doesn't matter which one. And then the two electrons in the, the OH bond becomes a lone pair on oxygen. So if you notice the arrow starts on the bond and the arrow ends on the atom, that means you're taking those two electrons in the bond and dumping them onto the oxygen atom as a lone pair. So if it goes backwards, oxygen had one lone pair. Now if it goes backwards, now the oxygen has two lone pairs. <clears throat> and for this other arrow, so that lone pair, so this arrow means that lone pair becomes a bond between oxygen and hydrogen, which is where that line came from. Okay, so since the reaction is reversible, we could classify the reverse reaction as something being an acid and something being a base. So which is an acid, which is a base? <clears throat> well, since this is gaining the hydrogen, then it's a base, often called the conjugate base. Right, so this on the left is the acid and on the right is its conjugate base. <clears throat> and since the H3O plus is losing the hydrogen, then it's an acid, often called the conjugate acid. So this is the base and this is its conjugate acid. Okay, let's take another example. Oh, so this is an acid that you're all familiar with, probably. Uh, this is called acetic acid, which is also vinegar, which you find in pickle juice, for example. <clears throat> okay, so if we take another example, so if we take ammonia, and let it react with water, oops, So at this point, I wouldn't expect you to take two compounds and be able to predict the product that they make. If you <coughs> go into organic chemistry, that's something you would have to do in organic chemistry is predict products of reactions. In this chapter, I'll just tell you what the products are. So you make that and you make... You make that so that'll be your two products so then so oxygen has three lone pairs in the bonds so six valence minus six dots on one line negative and nitrogen's got five valence minus four lines so it would be plus one if you had to assign four more charges <clears throat> so you make ammonium hydroxide okay so i would give you the reaction and just ask you to label the acids and bases Okay, so what's an acid, what's a base? So NH3 um, has three hydrogens. It gained a hydrogen. To make NH4+, plus. so if it gained a hydrogen, then it's a base. And then H2O um, becomes OH-, minus. so it lost a hydrogen. So it's an acid. And then on the right side, if the reaction goes backwards, so in reverse, um, so NH4 plus loses, loses an H, so it's an acid, or again, often called the conjugate acid of NH3. And then hydroxide gains NH, so it's a base. 
or again, oftentimes it's called the conjugate. Conjugate base. <clears throat> so that's all that you would have to basically do in this section of the chapter is I give you a reaction, you tell me what was the acid, what was the base. And the other thing that you might be asked to do is show a mechanism, how did this reaction happen? <clears throat> so when ammonia reacted with water, that lone pair took off a hydrogen, and that's where you made the fourth bond to hydrogen. And then the OH bond become a lone pair. That's where the third lone pair on hydroxide came from. And we could do the same thing for the reverse reaction. If this reaction goes in reverse, then you need to take a lone pair on oxygen, make a bond to hydrogen. It doesn't matter which one. And the two electrons in the NH bond, whoa. So the two electrons in the NH bond. So the arrow starts on the bond and ends up on the atom. That means those two electrons are dumped onto nitrogen to make a lone pair. And now you have NH3 and H2O again. Okay, so if you notice between these two reactions, in the reaction here, water's acting as a base. In the reaction here, it's acting as an acid. So new definition for you. So water is said to be an amphoteric compound. And that is, that is simply compounds that can act as an acid or a base. It just depends on what they're reacting with. Okay, so that's all that you would have to know about acids and bases.